If you're thinking about starting up a fresh save in Grounded, or are a new player to the game looking for some guidance regarding your backyard expeditions, then these tips and tricks will most assuredly assist you during your adventures. We'll be covering things like how to get Tier 2 gear fast and easy, where you should set up your first starter base, how to increase your chances of landing critical hits, and even a super special secret weapon that's sure to spark up some controversy down in the comments. What up? I'm Tiny Pirate Gaming, and here's at least 10 tips and tricks for starting a fresh save in Grounded. Number 14. Don't fight multiple enemies at once if you don't have to. Instead, use a bow and arrow to lure creatures away from their clustered spawn locations so that you can engage them in one-on-one -on -one combat. This technique will prevent you from being suddenly surrounded and will allow you to truly time your perfect blocks against your opponent so that you can save on armor durability and the use of healing items. Number 13. Get a gas mask as early as you can. Gas masks not only allow you to withstand the toxic fumes of the stink bug gas attacks, but will also be required to complete the haze lab as part of the game's story questline. Most of the materials needed to craft a gas mask, such as weevil noses, gnat fuzzes, and crude ropeses, are easy enough to acquire in the early game. The real trick is finding a stink bug part, because without first having a gas mask, confronting a stink bug can be a nearly impossible challenge. Fortunately, there is an alternative in the form of the spider web sacks. These web sacks not only provide web fiber, but upon being destroyed, they also have a chance to drop random creature parts, including stink bug parts. Once you manage to find a stink bug part, you'll be able to craft your first gas mask, which will help you even the odds against the stink bugs in battle. The gas mask will also allow you to adventure into the haze region and obtain fungal growth by luring the infected weevils into performing their kamikaze attacks and harvesting their remains. I do not advise engaging in combat with the infected creatures until you've gotten some tier 2 gear, but I do suggest using this little trick to get your hands on fungal growth as soon as possible so that you can start crafting brat burst bombs early. Number 12 Brat burst bombs are one of the most important items in Grounded. You're going to need them to progress through the story quest line, and they also allow you to access secret areas where you can find stat boosting collectibles and unique weapons like the Pinch Whacker, which we'll be discussing in a little bit. When it comes to building bombs, then you'll first want to do what I talked about in my last tip, and then analyze the fungal growth to unlock the Brat Burst recipe. Next, I recommend building a workbench close to the first field station and possibly a storage box or basket that you can use to store fungal growth and dry grass chunks, two of the resources needed to craft the Brat Burst Bombs. This will be your bomb bench, and the reason you want to build it here is because it's close to the Red Ant Hill, which is where you'll need to go to get the final ingredient for the Brat Burst, the Red Ant Eggs. And since Red Ant Eggs can hatch while in your inventory, you'll want to be able to craft them into bombs quickly after retrieving them. Red ant eggs can be found down in the red ant hill at two spawn points, but if you bash a bunch of red ants prior to going down in there, you can sometimes find clusters of eggs located in the top chamber. The easiest way to retrieve these eggs without having to battle your way through a horde of aggressive ants is to wear a full set of red ant armor, which will enable the effect Humant. This status effect allows you to approach the hostile red soldier ants without being detected. However, the ants will still turn aggressive towards you when you take the eggs, regardless of the armor that you wear. To craft the red ant helmet, you're going to need one red ant head, three red ant parts, and five mite fuzzes. The red ant arm guards will cost five red ant parts, two acid glands, and two mite fuzzes. And the red ant knee guards require six red ant parts, two crude rope, and four mite fuzzes. Another useful benefit of the red ant armor is that wearing it will increase your hauling strength, allowing you to carry more weed stems and grass planks on your shoulder while building. Anyway, once you're able to grab yourself some red ant eggs, you can take them to your bomb bench and craft them into brat burst bombs using two fungal growth, one red ant egg, and four dry grass chunks. Number 11. An early tier 2 armor that's actually available at the start of the game is the Rotten Bee armor which you can find inside of the chambers down in the Red Ant Hill. 
Although the Rotten B armor stats aren't the best, it is still better than or on par with most of the tier 1 armor crafting recipes that you'll have access to at the start of a fresh save. The best way to obtain this armor is to wear a set of red ant armor and then travel to the red ant hill, which is located in the western regions of the lower grasslands. Here it is on the map. If you hug the right wall while traveling down into the ant hill, you'll eventually reach a chamber with a raw science orb, which is also one of the chambers that spawns in the eggs. If you jump up onto a ledge on the side of this chamber, then you will find the rotten bee face mask amongst the partial remains of a shrunken skeleton. Once you've grabbed it, continue down into the tunnel and follow the right hand wall until it emerges into another chamber that has a hole in the floor. This is the second egg spawn chamber and if you go to the other side of the hole in the floor, you can grab the rotten bee shin guards from more skeletal remains. Finding the final piece of the armor is simple enough from here, because all you have to do is drop down into the hole in the floor, and beside of a mint in this chamber, you will find the Rotten Bee shoulder pads alongside more parts of the skeleton. The Rotten Bee armor is a light armor that enables the status effect of bow stun, which will give your bow and arrows extra stun effects when you use them. You can also analyze this rotten armor like other rotten pieces of gear to unlock additional crafting recipes, boost your brain power level, and earn some extra raw science. science. Number 10. You may have noticed from the last two tips that tunnels and caves can be very dark. It can also get extremely dark at night in the backyard, which is why I highly recommend that you carry around a torch while out adventuring. There's a few options for torches in the game, but at the start of a fresh save, you'll most likely want to use the regular torch, unless you're going into an underwater cave or tunnel, in which case you'll need to use a slime mold based torch. You can craft a torch using two sprigs, one sap, two crude rope, and three dry grass chunks, which are easily found almost anywhere around the yard, and you can craft torches without using a workbench, so there's really no reason not to have one while out exploring. See what's sneaking around here. Number 9. This next tip is designed to help you deal with some of those hard to reach places around the yard and to avoid some of the frustration that comes with trying to complete difficult platforming puzzles. My answer, clover leaf roof ramps. Technically, you can get by with building any sort of structure that allows you to climb, but clover leaf roof ramps provide you with the most lift for your cost allowing you to reach elevated heights with easy to find resources and in a cost effective manner. This is because in order to craft a section of clover leaf roof, it's only going to cost one weed stem, four clover leaves and two saps. And mostly all of these resources can be easily gathered almost anywhere around the yard. So the next time you're trying to reach one of those elevated resources, save yourself some time and frustration by avoiding the platform puzzles and just craft a clover leaf roof ramp instead. Number 8. Now it's time to take all of the tips that I just mentioned and put them into action to get your hands on what is arguably the best weapon in the game, the Pinch Whacker. And you can get this weapon very early in a fresh save which will give you a tremendous advantage over your enemies throughout the entirety of your playthrough. In order to get this incredible weapon, you're going to need one bomb and probably a dandelion tuft. You'll also want to have the recipe for cloverleaf roofs, which you can unlock by purchasing the multi-story bases recipes from the ASL terminals using 1000 raw science. Next, you'll need to travel to the milk carton that's located to the east of the oak tree along the ledge near the pond. Here it is on the map. Located within the stacked stones of this ledge is a secret hidden lab room. The fastest way to reach it is with the cloverleaf roof ramp. Just be careful where you build it because there are bombardier beetles and orb weaver spiders in the area that will attack you if they see you. Once you've built your ramp, you can use it to reach the gap between the stones where you'll find the damaged door of the hidden lab. Here it is on the map.
Using a bomb, you'll be able to gain access to this small lab, and down inside you'll find a treasure loot box with some upgrade materials inside. Beside of this box is a red-colored ominous trash can, and poking out from the top of it is the pinch whacker. And you can also find the rotten berry charm in the collapsed tunnel of this hidden lab room that will boost the effectiveness of the rotten gear that you can discover around the yard. Although the pinch whacker can't be used to harvest resources anymore, it is still an early tier 3 weapon that has punishing damage potential, spectacular stunning capabilities, and can even burst out an electrical area of effect attack, which will stagger momentarily any enemies that may be around you. So even though you can practically get this weapon at the start of a fresh save, it is far from a starter weapon. It is a finisher weapon that will serve you well throughout the rest of the game. I have contained my rage for as long as possible, but I shall unleash my fury upon you like the crashing of a thousand waves! Be gone, vile man! Be gone from me! A starter car! This car is a finisher car! A transporter of gods! The golden god! I am untethered and my rage knows no bounds! <laughs> Number 7 These next two tips are going to deal directly with tier 2 tools that will be required to not only complete the storyline of the game, but are also essential for collecting the stat boosting milk molders throughout your journey. And for that reason, I recommend obtaining these tools before you set out on your crusade around the backyard to gather the missing super chips for Burgle. One of these tools is the Tier 2 Spider Fang Dagger, which can be crafted using one Spider Fang, three Silk Rope, and four Spider Venom. You can obtain Spider Fangs and Spider Venom from defeating and harvesting Wolf Spiders, which should be a bit easier for you if you've gotten the Pinch Whacker. And in order to get Silk Rope, you'll need to run Web Fiber through a Spinning Wheel. You can craft a Spinning Wheel using two Acorn Tops, four Clay, four red ant parts, three sap, and four crude ropeses, and to unlock the crafting recipe, you just need to analyze any of those resources. The spider fang dagger will allow you to cut through underwater vines and roots, as well as harvest eelgrass from the pond by acting as an underwater cutting tool. It is also one of the most powerful tier 2 combat weapons due primarily to its rapid fire attack animations and its ability to poison your opponents, making it superior when compared to most of the other daggers available in the game. Number 6 The next vital tool that I suggest you build is the tier 2 insect hammer which will be required to harvest landlocked milk molars from around the yard. You can craft this hammer using 4 stink bug parts, 4 berry leathers, and 1 boiling gland. Stink bug parts come from stink bugs. And in the lower yard, there's a few specific locations where you can farm them. In this clearing here between the red anthill and the borders of the haze region, you can usually find a cluster of 4 to 5 stinkies. Here it is on the map. There's another cluster on the north side of the pond close to the Franken line. Here it is on the map. A lone stink bug hangs out on the roots on the east side of the oak tree. Here it is on the map. And further to the east from here is a field station where you can find even more. Here it is on the map. Boiling glands can be dropped when harvesting bombardier beetles and in the lower yard there's a few regions that I like to use when farming their parts. On the west side of the pond, right around the Franken line, you will usually find two hanging around a small grouping of mushrooms. Here it is on the map. There's also two more that spawn on the east side of the pond close to the milk carton and just below the hidden lab where the pinch whacker can be found. Here it is on the map. Three bombos like to hang out on the rocks under the east side corner of the house porch between the hedge and the porch. Here it is on the map. And if you're looking for a lone confrontation, then you'll find a solo bombo along with some annoying mites scampering around the area formerly known as Spade Gulch. Here it is on the map. As for the berry leather, you'll first need to harvest berry chunks from the berries found in the berry bushes of the hedge. Here it is on the map. I usually just shoot them down using a bow and arrow, but there are alternative ways to knock them down if you prefer that. Once you have the berry chunks, you'll need to convert them into berry leather, and there's actually two ways to do this. You can craft three berry chunks into a single berry leather using the crafting menu of the workbench, or you can craft the leather using only one berry chunk by hanging it on a jerky rack. 
Using the workbench will save you time but cost you more chunks, whereas with the jerky rack you'll have to wait a little while but will ultimately save on berry chunks. It doesn't really matter which method you use because all that really matters is that you get what you need to craft the insect hammer. Once you have the hammer then you'll be all set to start gathering any milk molars you come across while exploring the rest of the game and while collecting the super chips to complete the story quests. Number 5 when your weapons, tools, or armors lose their durability, rather than repairing them regularly, I recommend that you upgrade them instead using the smithing station. You can purchase the recipe for the smithing station immediately after activating the ASL terminal in the Oak Lab for just 100 raw science. In order to craft the smithing station, you'll need one piece of brittle quartzite and one piece of brittle marble. And a great place to gather both of these at the start of a fresh save is down in the red anthill, which I suggest you do because you're going to need these resources to actually upgrade your gear during the early half of the game. Crafting the smithing station will cost one brittle quartzite shard, one brittle marble shard, four crude ropeses, and two saps. Next, you'll need to use your workbench to convert quartzite and marble into whetstone and plating. Whetstone comes from quartzite and is used for upgrading weapons, while plating comes from marble and is used for upgrading armor. Once you've done this, you'll be able to upgrade your gear using the smithing station, which will also repair the selected item if it is low on durability or even completely destroyed. And for a weapon like the pinch whacker, which requires repair glue, using the smithing station repair trick will be the only way to maintain this weapon's functionality during the early game until you unlock the recipe for the glue masher later. Number 4 Coupe de Grasse is one of the best mutations in the game and it can be unlocked and maxed out relatively early in a fresh save in just a few simple steps. You might want a slime mold torch for this, but it's not required. What will be required for the second part of this tip will be a Brat Burst Bomb and a Tier 2 Hammer, but we'll get to that in a moment. Because the first step to unlocking the Coupe de Grasse mutation is to travel to the Chop Cola Can along the banks of the Eastern Flooded Region and then follow the shoreline south until you spot an overturned leaf in the water. It's located close to the yoked girth head and here it is on the map to help you find it easier. Beneath of this partially submerged leaf, you'll find an underwater tunnel. This is where a slime mold torch might come in handy because this tunnel is very dark and loops around under itself so it can be quite easy to get turned around and stuck. When you make your way to the end of this tunnel, you'll emerge from the water in a secluded cave with a four-leaf clover. By discovering it, you will unlock one half of the full potential of Coupe de Grasse. In order to unlock the second part of this mutation, you'll want to take a Brat Burst Bomb along with a Tier 2 Hammer to the Leaning Shovel next to the Picnic Table. The Picnic Table is located on the western side of the yard, and here's an image of the map where you can find the Leaning Shovel. You'll also need to bring a powerful weapon. If you have the Pinch Whacker, you should be fine, but if you don't, you'll need to bring a leveled up Red Ant Club at the minimum. Using your Brat Burst Bomb, you'll need to destroy the rock under the Leaning Shovel, which will cause it to fall over and create a ramp up to the table's south side bench. Make your way up to the bench and then travel all the way to the far end where you can use the crossbeam along with some nails to reach the other bench. Be careful here because two bees often patrol this area and they will become hostile towards you if they spot you on the crossbeam. Once you reach the other bench, use the slanted Minotaurs and Myrmidons book to climb up to the cooler box handle and using your tier 2 or better hammer, you can bash it and create another ramp that will give you access to the top of the table. Once on top of the table, make your way into the maze, then take a left, then a right, then turn right and go through the partially open door near the end of this corridor. This will take you to the maze's end where you'll find a 20-sided dice that can be moved if you have a strong enough weapon. Using your powerful weapon of choice, probably a pinch whacker, you now need to hit the dice until it rolls into a position with the number 20 facing up. If done correctly, stars will shoot out from the dice and you will unlock the second half of the Coupe de Grasse mutation, completely maxing this mutation out. 
Coupe de Grasse increases your critical hit chances and the true benefit to critical hits in Grounded is that they can stagger your opponents and even interrupt enemy attack animations, much like the area of effect attack created by the Pinchwhacker. Number 3 There's a backdoor in the Oak Lab that you can use to return to Burgle faster or to return to the lab's ASL terminal easier. You'll need to open it by pressing this button here, so don't forget to do that when you first visit the Oak Lab. Number 2 If you're one of those filthy, no-good, grounded tryhards that's always out there perfect blocking everything and taunting the wolf spiders with your tactically timed trigger squeezes and mouse clicks, like me, then there's a new accessory that's perfect for you. It's called the Compliance Badge and it is super easy to get. All you gotta do is go to the area between the hedge and the house's porch and check the ground underneath of the electrical socket. There you'll find a shrunken skeleton that you can search to discover the new accessory. Just watch out for the larva because they like to hang out around there. The compliance badge is a really neat accessory that will heal you every time you manage the perfect block, but it also has a downside in that while wearing it your damage resistance will go down, which means that attacks you fail to perfect block will hurt more than normal. But before we move on, I just wanted to let you know that if you're a fan of grounded themed, grounded related content presented in tutorial format, then you found the right channel because that's basically all that I do here. So if that interests you, then destroy the like button with a powerful thrust kick and then finish it off with an accurate, precision shot. And I hope that this video earned your subscription today. Number 1 when it comes to setting up a starter base, I recommend selecting locations around the pond that are either elevated off of the ground or located in a hard to reach area to prevent creatures from becoming problematic. The elevation and separation will help to protect your valuable utilities and storage centers in the event of a factional raid and the locations around the pond will put your base of operations close to the middle of the map which will make it equidistance with the other biomes and save you time on travel while you explore the backyard. And that does it for this list of more than 10 grounded tips and tricks for a clean fresh start. I hope that you enjoyed it. And if you want to talk more about Grounded, then you can follow me on Twitch for live streams, Twitter for channel news, and join the Tiny Pirate Gaming Discord for discussions on Grounded gaming, content creation, and more, along with me and the rest of the hashtag Tiny Crew. So whether I see you here in the comments, over on the Twitch sphere, or someplace else across the streamiverse, just know that I really appreciate all of your support, and thank you so much for watching. Until next time. Alright matey, watch your step. There be a Tiny Pirate here.